Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're finally gonna move into our Simulink environment to um, simulate our model for the blending tank that we came up with. So, just to give you guys a recap, here's our schematic. We have our inlet flow rates, we have our inlet mass fractions, the outlet mass fraction, the outlet mass flow rate, and the outlet mass fraction are, are going to be our unknowns and the mass inside the tank during operation is 100 kilograms okay our initial steady state values have been given we know the uh, our, at steady state initially our output flow rate is 5 kilograms per second and our outlet mass fraction is 0 0.02 okay we were able to come up with these two uh, equations that describe our that describe our uh, blending tank system all right, a very simple model. A total mass balance followed by a species balance. Two equations, two unknowns. Degree of freedom zero. We can solve this. Yeah. So before we went into the Simulink environment, here's a here's a recap. Here's just here's to uh, give you guys a recap of the sketch that we drew uh, that we're gonna implement in our Simulink environment. So with that said, let's uh, get started, shall we? So first off, I have my four input my four uh, input blocks and I'm gonna use them I'm gonna have my inputs set up as step functions so I'm gonna have three of these okay so if I right click and drag it copies them all right first one is gonna be m1 followed by oops uh, xa1 followed by M2 and as you guys can probably guess XA2 all right that said um, our first equation is gonna be our first equation was M1 plus M2 and this is just gonna be we're just gonna use an add block so here's my add block let me just magnify that a little so okay M1 goes in there Oops. M1 goes in there, snappy snap, M2 snaps in there, and now this outlet stream right here, I'm going to label that as M3, okay? I hope you guys can see that. This is M this stream right here is M3, okay? It doesn't have its, uh, it has its uh, source, but it doesn't have its uh, destination yet, so we're going to give it its destination. Moving on to our second different, second equation. We have all these product terms as you can see xa1 times M m1 xa2 times m2 etc etc so we need we're gonna need a total of three product blocks a product here product here and we're gonna need another product here so all right xa1 multiplied by m1 there we go snappy snap Oops, oops, I don't need that. Sorry, go back. XA2, snap it with M2. All right, very good. And M2 goes, M2 goes here. Okay, snap that. And we don't have XA3 yet, but that's not going to stop us. We're just going to label it as XA3. XA3 is going to be our output. So as you can see, I'm just trying to uh, follow this sketch that I made. The sketch that I made earlier and all of this okay all of this goes into an other addition block now this is where my species balance is going to come in my species balance actually has three two additions two input terms and one output term so plus plus minus now m1 m1 times xa1 i hope you can see this let me label this m1 oops m1 xa1 times m1 oops let's do that again did that work all right um okay so we have our uh, inlet flow rate in stream one of species a and now we need inlet flow rate of species a in stream two so this is going to be labeled xa2 m2 okay and followed by the outlet stream all right, let's just move that aside, shall we? Oops. Um, yeah, this looks this looks about all right. Okay. So yeah, and let me just label this. I'm labeling each and every 
I'm labeling each and every um, signal so that I know what I'm doing and you don't have to but it makes your life it's gonna make your life so much easier um, okay let's see I just want to make this a little more clear all right now that looks slightly better okay moving on and now the output coming from now this has to be divided there's a as you can see there's a gain term here gain and the value of the gain is going to be one divided by the mass inside the tank so that's just going to be equal to one divided by 100 i believe that's how i'm going to give it oops it doesn't want the equal sign it just wants the numerical value we can get, we, we can do that okay so yep well done and now we need the integrator block so the integrator block is gonna all right so just to just to keep you guys now let me i think we don't need that anymore and um let's see what we have all right everything is looking good and this right here this signal is the um dxa3 dt so this is the derivative term and once it comes out of the integrator block it's going to be xa3 okay oops xa3 all right and yeah we can loop this back as you guys can see oh, look at that look at that all right snappy snap beautiful wonderful oh don't forget the initial condition our initial condition was our initial condition was 0 0.02 as you can see here all right we got it 0 0.02 and um, of course I need a scope the scope you can put it wherever you want I'm just gonna put it right here and it's gonna snap the input to the scope is just gonna be XA3 so that's gonna work uh, all right um, you can shrink you can um, enlarge the blocks how you see fit it's up to you your aesthetic your aesthetic my aesthetic my aesthetic now okay um what were my steady state inputs my input mass was i believe two kilograms per second and right now i'm not gonna step anything oops sorry step time is zero and initial and final values are two which means that there is no disturbance at big at the beginning there's no disturbance at the beginning zero zero point zero five i believe and the final value stays at zero point zero five right now we're just keeping it at steady state right now we're just keeping it at steady state all right boom and xa2 was pure this was pure water so there's no the concentration of the fraction of species is zero okay so yeah fingers crossed let's run this and see what happens simulate model okay all right as you can see it's loading up compiling any day now okay so it ran without any errors let's see what the scope says give it a second okay so uh, yeah our steady state values are correct this shows that my steady state value of xa3 of xa3 is 0 0.02 indeed now what happens if I were to increase the mass flow rate of water let's say from 3 to 4 and I'm gonna step it up at five seconds. The units of times, by the way, are gonna be the unit of the time units are gonna be in the same units that you use in your equations. Okay, so I'm just using SI units. So for me, it's not a problem. But if you're using English units, be careful. If you're using minutes, hours in your equations, those are gonna be the time units. All right? Let's see what happens. So I stepped up my water flow rate by two kilograms. Uh, let me see that again. Yeah, three to four, sorry. It went from three to four kilograms per second. And as you can see, my, as expected, XA3 starts to go down. As I have more water, as I introduced more water, my system is gonna start becoming dilute. And you can see this, this is a very first order response. This is a first order response. It's, uh, the gradient is steepest at the, 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 the gradient is the gradient is steepest at the time 
the function is stepped and it become and it becomes less steep as we go along okay um let's see what else happens let's say if my inlet flow rate jumps up what do you think is going to happen if the inlet flow rate jumps up and it's going to jump up from 2 kilogram per second to 5 kilogram per second at the 5 second interval and let's see what happens simulate again so every time you change your variables you have to click run again so that everything updates and as you can see since now i'm sending in more uh, now i'm sending more a into my system my outlet streams are getting more concentrated all right and uh, let's see what happens if i keep increasing the value of the value of the water flow rate from three to five okay let's see now here's the here's the beauty of it you can play around with you can I'm, I'm sending in step functions but you can send in ramp functions you can send in like various um different signals yeah it's up to you you can construct your input your forcing functions you can construct your disturbances and see how your model is going to behave that's the beauty of simulink so now i'm stepping up both of my flow rates as you can see i stepped both of my flow rates up and let's see how that affects my so by stepping both of these flow rates up the m1 dominates now the m1 dominates hence my system is becoming more concentrated okay three to five and three to five if i were to now all you have to do is just play around and see how your system behaves okay now it's pretty simple okay let's uh is all right the one last thing one last thing before i finish this um video tutorial i just want to see what happens as the um as the water stream gets polluted so let's say it suddenly gets polluted to 0 0.05 and let's see how that affects our outlet concentration okay so wait hold up i want to step it up at a five interval mark five seconds okay so we have our initial steady state at 0 0.02 and the water keeps uh, as the um in the inlet fraction of pure water stream quote unquote increases our system becomes more concentrated and let's run it for 50 seconds and see what's the steady state value so as you can see now it's approaching a it starts to approach a steady state between 0 0.045 and 0 0.05 let's run it for 75 seconds and see what happens and as you can see the uh it asymptotically approaches somewhere around 0 0.05 now you can calculate the uh, final steady state value theoretically using um, by solving both solving your algebraic equations uh, or you can just run it for you can just run your simulation for a really long time and see where it starts to asymptote and mine is starting to asymptote mine just approaches 0 0.05 so the 0 0.05 is the uh, is the new steady state of the system if your uh, if the stream 2 gets polluted all right so uh, I hope you guys found this video tutorial helpful um and uh, yeah in the upcoming videos i'll see if i can simulate more examples in simulink all right thank you guys